I'm so excited. Maggie is here. Lauren Cohen joins me today. I'm so happy you're Hi. here. Hi, me too. Thanks for having me. Your character has changed so drastically over the past you know, season or two. How do you keep up with that? You started off as very naive, very sheltered, on the farm. I mean, you were holding walkers essentially as pets in yes. the barn to take <laughs> care of you know, almost poor souls as opposed to something that's going to try to eat you. And now you're taking a knife and venturing out on your own to kick some ass and find your husband. Yes, very, very true. And I think that it's been a really handy evolution for myself as well as for my character. And we've had, uh, you know, when we started the season, myself and Scott and, and Emily Kinney, we, we came on and the group was literally thrust into our house with a bleeding, dying child. And we just had to cope and help in whichever way we could. And we were normal humans sort of sheltered from the apocalypse and dealing with that situation. So as we've needed to pick up skills, we have done. So, you know, art has imitated life and vice versa in this thing. But um, it's very interesting. And I think where we're at this season is so interesting at the halfway point after having lost my dad um, and looking for my husband. All the things that have previously identified Maggie and that Maggie has been able to identify herself with are gone. You know what I mean? She's just... Um, and Beth. She's dead set. And Beth, yes. Um, it's so funny because in the previous episode, she had uh, this moment when she's talking with Daryl, and she's like, and Maggie's probably gone, and I went to call and be like, she's not. I'll find you, I hope. <laughs> but, yeah, so it's just sort of this, this struggle for all the characters, but it's also a chance for everybody to sort of re-identify themselves, I guess. It, what has been the hardest character for you to lose? Uh, Scott, too. I, and I think... We've all now at this point been together for such a long time, um, or, you know, these four years. And um, it's a strange thing because when someone goes, you've had more time together to bond. And, and like Norman was saying, we have friendships that are very strong outside of the show. But um, I will really miss having him on set because he's... I don't know, he calls me and Emily his daughters. And when we shot that scene, he was on the other side of the fence and we, we shot the coverage of us of when, when he died and stuff, and it's just, it, it's really sad. It's really, I'm like, just like, it's, it sucks. It completely sucks. And there's, there are definitely times when I'll be driving home from work and I'll just think like, what if so-and-so went or what if this? And you don't intend to think these thoughts, but they come and you're just like, it's just disaster. It's just a beautiful little spell that we're in in this show and I don't want it to ever end. <laughs> Does it stress you out when you get a new script? And you're no. thinking, oh, God, what is in this? Because I never thought Herschel's character was going to go in that way. I'm with Beth. I pictured him old and with grandkids, yeah. just sort of living it out, killing zombies. I feel like after he survived getting his leg amputated, we right? couldn't possibly <laughs> let, like, let the governor get the best of him. But yeah. And of all people, the governor. Right. Yes, oh, I know. It sucks. It's, it's, it's really shocking. And it was an interesting thing because Scott had these amazing episodes before of heroism and like he saves everybody in the group. And then what is the symbol now of, of that person going? And, you know, the torch being passed, so to speak, from Dale to him and this sort of moral... Um, compass that they both were for the show and now you know where is this group untethered without sort of the grandfather of the group and it's it's just really I don't remember even what your question was now because I'm lost <laughs> in nostalgia but it's <laughs>